Let's go. Because I have a lot to say about this video we, I'm about to do right now. So make sure y'all hit that like button. Y'all see that like? Smash the like button. Subscribe to this channel. Yo, 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 yo. If they know, they know. It's your boy Smoke News TV. We back here with another video. This time, we, we, I don't know when. Houston, we're in New York. But we're going to go down to H-Town because I feel like Jay Prince Jr., it's throwing a little subliminal shot at Mason Cam, and we're going to talk about this, and we're going to go down memory lane a little bit. So before I start this video, smash that like button that's right there, and it's free. Subscribe to this channel. Make sure you keep that notification bell on. Share this video also, and try to get that membership and join Team Smoke. So let's get this video started, because I have a lot to say. Let's get uh, copyright fair use disclaimer. You can find that in my description on my channel. Everything that I speak on is for educational and entertainment purpose. Again, copyright fair use disclaimer. You can find that in my description on my channel. Everything that I speak on over here is for educational, entertainment purpose. Clips and videos I play are also owned by the original creators. Let's get that out the way early because I have a lot to say about this guy right here. And the guy I'm talking about, y'all see it in the thumbnail, that's Jay Prince Jr. And everything I speak on, on, this, on this video is allegedly. Everything I speak on is alleged. I don't know who Jay Prince Jr. think he is. Let's start there. But boy, let come here. Let me talk to you right quick, Junior. Since you like to go live and talking, talking certain words, little little subliminals and big words because you went to private school and you know certain words to use and towards like street guys or uneducated guys. And I'm not talking about Cam and Mace. Because I could imagine how he talked to y'all dudes. The little dudes, little mob ties and all that niggas that's really in the streets and really come from the hood. I can imagine. And I know y'all look up to him like he, I ain't going to say like he God, but I know y'all look up to him like a big brother or something because he got the bag. But let me talk to you right quick, Junior, because I feel like nobody could, somebody need to talk to you, bro. You know how I feel to wake up, turn that light on, roll to scatter out? You know how I feel to go to the corner store with that full stack? Not the EBT called the food stamp money. Yeah, back in the 90s. You know how that feel? I don't think so. You know how I feel to walk to public school and all that? You know how I feel to be raised by a single mom, single dad, either one, vice versa? Even a grandma, whoever went through it, what, what they went through in the hood? And I'm talking about shout out to my hood people. I come from that. Now, not all hood people come from circumstances like that. Some of us had a little bit of good than others. Y'all know what I mean. Real hood people know what I'm talking about. Real people that come from that environment. You don't come from that. Oh, nah, hold up. You know where you come, you, you, were, you was a visitor. You was one of the relatives and the cousins and all that that came down to Fifth War, visited cousins. You was one of those that came by in the summertime. You ain't lived down there 365 days out of the year. You ain't wake up to that. You ain't wake up to cer certain circumstances that your cousins and certain relatives or certain friends you had probably went through when they was kids, but you up in the hills or you up somewhere else in the suburbs, but you want to come down to the hood, all this, you was a visitor. That's what you was. All of us had them type of relatives. Everybody that's watching this video know they had that. Yeah, I had a cousin that came from out down south that came up the east coast, came to New York or something, or you had a cousin that went to the west coast in LA or something. He, he from Georgia or somewhere. You always had a relative that come to the come from the little towns, little nice towns, little suburb, nice houses. But, you know, in the summertime, they want to go visit their cousins or they want to go visit their brothers and sisters from their father's side or something like that, that come from the hood. Don't we all got them type of relatives? Don't we all got them type of cousins? Don't we all got them type of brothers and sisters that come from the good homes where they want to come visit our hood and we welcome them? But all of a sudden, he, they end up they end up like a dude, like a J. Prince Jr. That part. And that's my whole point about this video right here. That's why I had to touch on this pause. Because I'm tired of this doing everything I speak on is a legend. But I'm tired of you being on here talking to people. And we're going to go through a couple clips. The way you talk to people, the way you talk to other artists. Oh, yeah, it's a couple lives that you did that. We're going to go through all this. And we're going to react to this. Because you don't come from that environment. You was a visitor. Let that marinate. <clears throat> Let that marinate in your soul and your brain right quick. And do me a favor, y'all. Smash that like button that's right there in the screen if you haven't smashed the like button. Subscribe to the channel. Who I'm talking about is J. Prince Jr. You was a visitor that came to the hood. 
like I said, you come from the and you're not gonna sit here and tell me that I was raised in the hood, I slept in the hood. It's no way in the world because your old man had money in the 90s, bro. There's no way in the world your old man would have you living in them type of circumstances. Roaches in the crib, mice is in there, hot water ain't working on certain days. You gotta eat oodle and noodle some nights. You might have to eat cold syrup. You, come on, you don't come from that circumstance. And some people even had it worse. What are we talking about here? You didn't come from that. You was a visitor. You was one, you was the good one that sat in the living room and watched your cousin and them. You was a yeah, you was one of them. You was fascinated by that shit. Exactly. You went to private school. You ain't go to public school. You don't know how it feel like to fight the other homies from another block or another project and all that after school and all that. You won't you won't come from that. You don't. You don't know how to feel to run from you running. You the only one. Everybody scattered out. You trying to get back everybody because there's more niggas chasing y'all than the niggas that, that I mean than, than y'all niggas. There's 20 niggas chasing three, four niggas. You don't know how that feel. You don't come for that. And if you did, you was a visitor. You didn't go through that 365 days out of the year. Let's start this video, man. Let's start this video because I got more to say. This dude is, re let me tell you something, Junior. There's no reason for you to act the way you act. Respect shows respect. Maybe you'll have more people sign to that label if you don't talk to people the way you talk to them. You talk to, you be little, you be little the way you talk to them. You talk to them like they're not educated. And, we, and I'm gonna go through a couple of clips, yeah, that the way you talk to people. You talk to people like you 6'11", 200 something pounds. You talk to people like you Suge Knight of the 90s. You're not Suge Knight, homie. Suge Knight was playing hands and feet on people in the night, in them, in that, in them death row days. Am I lying? What are we talking about here? Suge wasn't the type of talk. Suge, mm, grab you, lift. What are we talking about? That's, that's Suge right there. Boy, you're not that. Let's, let's go through this. This is a video that he made earlier. Now, everybody is, is suggesting that he might be throwing subliminal shots at Cam and Mace. The way he's talking, because you know he like to use big words and all that. Let's get to this clip right quick. Now he just did this a couple hours ago. You need to be fucking me up, right? Because niggas try to glorify bullshit. Like you niggas try to glorify soft shit. Niggas try to glorify niggas that ain't that niggas that's flawed. We're gonna go back. You see the way I'm talking I never seen nothing like this. This dude ain't a rapper, none of that. Let's get to that. He act like he's a rapper. He act like he come from the... Like, bro, glorify what? You the only one glorify the hood that you wasn't even raised. You wasn't raised in that hood. You was a visitor. Fifth War. What are we talking about here? Houston, tap in. H-Town, definitely tap in. Somebody in the comment when y'all watch this video and tell me that y'all see Junior his whole goddamn life, 365 days out of the year, all the way to his damn 18 years to until he turned 18. And, 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 and no, no, y'all didn't. Y'all ain't seen him in no public school. And if y'all did, nigga, he probably went there half a year, nigga. What are we talking about here? I know for a fact you ain't go through them type of circumstances because your father wouldn't allow that because your father was already in the game. You was a visitor in your hood. That's what get me mad about people because you got people that really live in the hood in them circumstances and you be over here acting like you from that. Talking like you be little people. And it's the other way around. Hood niggas want to get out the hood, but there's always these rich little niggas that always want to always be in the hood, always want to be a part of the hood. It's crazy. And hood niggas are you because you're the one with the bag. When you come from the hood, nigga, you get any type of bag, any necessary, and you as a visitor. So they're gonna they're gonna have your back, and, and plus who the name is, who your father is. Remind you, you're a visitor. You wasn't raised in the fifth war, nigga. Three hundred sixty-five days out that year, going through them circumstances. Let's go back to what he had to say allegedly about Mason Cam, whoever he was throwing this subliminal shot at. And everything I speak on is alleged. You need to be fucking me up, right? Because niggas try to glorify bullshit. Like you, niggas try to glorify soft shit. Niggas try to glorify niggas that ain't that niggas that's flow. Nigga, we know when niggas flow when we deal with them in the streets. We know when the nigga flow. Like we understand that they flow. We don't capitalize off their flowness though because we'll capitalize off real shit. We ain't gonna capitalize off no nigga being flawed, weak, 
is here. Nigga, we understand what a nigga weak as hell. Then he a street, call himself a street nigga. He could be a street nigga, but he's still weak as hell. We don't capitalize and try to glorify this shit. Now, we gonna sit and have conversations about niggas as strong as us. We don't have conversations about niggas as weak as hell. Yo, smash that like button. Do me a favor. Smash the like, subscribe to the channel, share this video. You see what he said? You got to read between the lines with a private school dude be talking. See, when you go to private school and you go to them good schools, when you went to law, I mean, all different type of nationalities and all that. Yeah, that part. You got the white, you got your call, you got your whites, you got your probably blacks over here, you got this type of nationality over here. You got this different type of nationality that comes from good good mansion homes, private school. So you're gonna learn how to manipulate people that don't know how to talk like that, don't understand that type of language, and they come from the hood, that part. That's why he said, oh yeah, just because he come from the hood, he's still weak though. He belittle every hood nigga when he talk like that. What are we talking about here? That's why he carry himself the way he carry himself. He get the ones that he could put under his wing that's gonna sit there and, and, and go like this. Because they're amazed. That's big bro. Oh, he's he's feeding us and he's dropping a little knowledge on us. No, y'all, y'all probably got more, way more street knowledge than he do. Y'all just don't know it. What are we talking about here? Like I said, he was a visitor to y'all little mild tied niggas that's under him, whatever, allegedly. The little cam and his little crew and all that. I hope y'all watch this video because y'all more smarter than him. Y'all live through them circumstances. Y'all niggas know how it feel to switch that light nigga and roaches scattered everywhere, right? Y'all know how that feel, right, probably? A lot of y'all little niggas that's put into the alleged work for him or the ones that's crashing out for him. He don't come from that. What are we talking about here? That's why he said, oh, yeah, the one, the, oh, just because he a street nigga, don't, he's still a weak nigga. Mm. I wonder why, because when you go to private school, you try to manipulate, you try to manipulate other people in the way you talk. That part. This dude was crazy. I'm trying to tell y'all, man. Yo, yo, all right, my mic good. Now, I'm gonna go back memory lane. Because like I said, I'm talking to Junior. This is a conversation between me and Junior. Number one, I wanna know why you gotta walk around here in this industry acting like you Teflon Dawn. Pardon me. Number two, why you act like you 6'8", 6, 6'11", 6, 200 something pounds? Number three, why you got to walk around here and act like you got to intimidate other rappers in this industry? You're not a rapper. You got one dude under your label. That's Finesse two times. And let me tell you something. I know for a fact, because Finesse come from that environment. Finesse, you watching this too? You know you come from that environment, nigga. You come from Memphis, nigga. You came from the dirt. So I know when you hear this nigga talking, you be one that's out of his face. I know for a fact you do. But you just can't touch it because who he is. And I know when you go back home, you tell your woman, like, boy, I can't stand this. This little nigga think he know everything. Because I got to remember, Finesse, Finesse didn't grow up with this nigga. Finesse came out of jail, went straight to this nigga. Off of who? Honeycomb Brazy. Why Honeycomb Brazy didn't rock with Junior? Because he didn't like Junior. You seen them shots he was throwing that Rob Todd? He said he rock with the old man rap a lot. He don't rock with Mob Todd and Junior. He said them niggas is fake. Them niggas ain't even no real niggas. Y'all forgot about that? Let that marinate in y'all brain and y'all soul who's my ties fans. Y'all forgot what Honeycomb was, was tweeting all that out, put it on Instagram and all that? Yo, them niggas is fake over there to my tie. Now, I respect the old man. But Junior, fake nigga. Now, let's go back. I remember, now, rest in peace, Takeoff. And this is crazy. Because Takeoff should have took feed on what 6 9 said in this interview in the Breakfast Club. Because that's the reason why Takeoff got his life taken, because he put his trust in, and he trusted these niggas' security down there. That part. Now, we're going to go back memory lane when 6 9 was on a breakfast club. And y'all remember when he went to Houston and he put a perform down there? He was the headline and all that. And he and you know how 6 9 was rolling at that time. He made sure he had security. But he wasn't no dummy also. Let's hear what 6 9 had to say. Smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and make sure you share this video. But I, I showed up, but you can't guarantee my safety. <laughs> now listen to this, right? right. Now listen. I said, yo, so I'm your main event, right? Are you going to guarantee my safety? You know what I'm saying? In the venue? 
it just started looking like a setup to me. You know what I'm saying? I said, yo, what's up with the security? Like, they allowing us the security there was from f Fifth Ward. And, Texas, yeah. Yeah. And, Jay Prince and they said Texas. they were scared of the, 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 to even tell them to get off stage. But, like, you know what I'm saying? There's a difference between being gangster and being stupid. Now, now, listen. Nah, 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 Listen this, right? I let my nuts hang, right? But am I going to go against a hundred niggas that want to get me? Or be the smarter person and be like, stupid, I'm not going to let you... He peeped the game before everybody else peeped it that they didn't make. Rest in peace to Duke, rest in peace to Tate. Y'all seen my Duke video. Duke ain't go down there for no reason. Duke had to check in with one of the cats, either Mob Ties or Boosie Cat. That's another story. Go check that video out. But 6 9 warned niggas this before that even happened. Now, this is before 6 9 got in, before the indictment came and he got on the stand and all that. This is before that. He was still running with nine trade niggas and all that in New York. Shotty and all them niggas. I remember six times running around with them New York niggas heavy, them Brooklyn niggas. But let me tell you, son, six nine through he he sent that message early. These niggas down there back doing niggas, setting niggas up. Nigga, we got security and security scared to tell them fifth ward niggas to get off the stage. Cause they so deep on the stage. But you put some push your trust on this. Look what happened in takeoff. Quavo arguing with fifth ward little niggas. Why Junior ain't stopped that argument? These are Grammy winning, uh, nigga, these are Grammy artists, nigga. These niggas win Grammy, these are Migos. And you couldn't stop some little niggas arguing with Quavo because you ain't like Quavo. So you just let that shit go. You just let, you continue letting these niggas argue. That part. But let's continue though, because we ain't done with this dude. <laughs> Now, look at the ignorant and the cockiness he, he be acting. I'm going down clips to show y'all what type of character he is. A dude that went to private school. And all of a sudden, he just walk around here and talk to hood niggas like they be little and they, under, they uneducated and all that. You know, well, we ain't done. Now, this is a clip he just talking, I mean, the way he is. Hello? Huh? Ain't word on the street. Them all tired shit make a nigga mad. Yeah. Man, tell them niggas, shut the fuck up. I'm just a dirt bag, nigga. Nah, he's up in his stuff there, nigga. I'm all tired, nigga. Real. It's up in his stuff. Just like with take all situation, just like everybody else. Let's get to it, man. Jay Prince Jr. found a rat in his pool and nicknamed it Gunner. Gunner! Gunner, what you doing, dawg? Don't even know the YSL situation. And you talking about Gunner. And I remember this situation, right? He just... just that's another thing. A nigga that's not even a rapper or nothing. You just be jumping in, jumping in mad stories, jumping in situations. At, oh, gonna rap. Nigga, you don't even know what's going on, nigga. YSL playing the whole play, allegedly. And everything I speak on is alleged over here. Let's continue, though. Because y'all gonna hear what dude's saying that's in the background talking about, talking about, CC, you gonna say the same thing I'm saying. Private school. You want, man, let's continue, bro. Jay Prince Jr. found a rat in his pool and nicknamed it Gunner. Gunner! Gunner, what you doing, dawg? What you doing in the real nigga pool? I thought Thug Dad said Gunner ain't do nothing to hurt the case. They just trying to troll Gunner at this point because he got hella streams. Besides, Gunner make better music than he ever did. But he's so corny, he's sitting there playing his music. Why lame ninjas always be trying to chime in to fit in? Jay Prince ain't nothing but a spoiled kid in street business. So Ninja's mad cause Gunna doing better than him. Old ad Ninja trying to fit in and clown a Ninja who not even worried about him. He corny like his soft dad daddy. He be on some lame ish every time I see him on the internet. How he gonna talk ish while playing his music? And he know the words. Man, I don't believe in thugs no more. Bruh really think we forgot about takeoff. He need to be worrying about why there's a rat in his pool. He looked pretty comfortable with rats, if you ask me. Exactly. Just like with the Duke situation, right? When I played that Duke video, you was dry snitching on Boosie. Yeah, you know, I went to Boosie party. That's when I first met him. I, 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 nigga, you was whole dry snitching. What we talking about here? What we talking about here? You see what I... Like I said, man, you, you... Yo, bro, you was spoiled, bro. You was a visitor going to your fatherhood. A visitor. You went there in the summertime visiting your cousin and them. That's where that's what's going on here. 
them niggas pick you up, bump you down there sometimes when they got older. When, 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 when somebody got his license, probably was you. You probably was the first one with license out of all your cousins, nigga, in the hood, nigga. Because you live in the good part, nigga. You was driving down there picking your hood cousins up, nigga, acting like you from the hood. We got all them type of relatives in our in our family. Or we know people like that. Am I lying? What are we talking about? And you one of them type of dudes. Leave the nice neighborhood, drive down a highway, about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour probably. It depends how long your goddamn suburb obsession where you live at, at, with the mansions at and all that. Going into the fifth floor, picking up your cousins that's from the hood. You a visitor. You wasn't great. You ain't lived there 365 days out of the year, boy. You ain't go to public schools. You wasn't on them corners 13, 14 years old, getting it how you got to get it. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Young age. Real grown man outside, nigga. Young niggas out there trying to get in the 90s. You wasn't in that era. Even in the 2000 era. You wasn't out there breaking night, nigga. Serving them clients out there trying to get it how you had it. Trying to get them fresh niggas for the next for the next week or the or the next party that's going on. Trying to keep yourself fly. You wasn't one of them teenagers. Nah, you had it all already. You was driving down the fifth floor picking your hood cousins up. Let's get to that. Let's continue. Smash that light, Buck. We ain't done. And uh say and uh we ain't done. Uh, do you have now this is a clip with him and young chop now the way he came at young chop now now look at young chop figures young chop looking at him like yo what like what like what are you talking about nobody don't fear you junior that's the problem you try to put fear in niggas hearts for i don't know what reason let's go back in memory lane uh, do you have a problem with me i don't know you like that so i'm gonna have a problem with nigga. Okay, I don't so know. what the fuck you get on my live talking shit for then he hurts, y'all. Oh, no, nah, I don't get hurt. I'm just trying to figure out what's going on so I know how to dress it from here on not. Is it? I can feel energy. That shit crazy. Yeah, you better feel That's mine I'm shaking right this now. shit. You better feel mine right now. Why your shit, why your shit doing that? Nigga, because people calling me, nigga. They trying to figure out what's going on with you. That's how quick. Why? That's how quick I get phone calls. Hey, to you, big dog. They try to figure out. They text me trying to figure out, yeah, if it's really something or not. That's how quick this shit happened with me. That's, hey. how, that's how quick it go. That's how quick it go. Now, that's him with Young Chop, memory lane. People probably remember that. Young Chop was like, nigga, I'm in Atlanta. What are you talking about, nigga? That's how you know. See, niggas looking at him, they only respect it because who his father is and that reputation they carry. But boy, let me tell you something. If you didn't have that behind, if you didn't have that back end with your father and all that, maybe a different story for you. Let's continue. Now, this is when he was on Adam 22. I want y'all to peep this. Because Adam 22 like to put niggas on blast sometimes. Y'all just got to read between the lines with Adam. Peep this when he was on Adam 22 a while ago, a long time ago. A little baby the other day <laughs> on the story. Yeah, little baby in the trenches, man. Yeah, I baby know. came to my hood, feel war. Shot. Now he talking at the beginning, he brought niggas to the hood, but I want y'all to put y'all volume but make sure y'all hear what he said. Because he's gonna be like, Yeah, you know, I throw parties in my hood, this and that. Like, like a nigga was there 365 days out of the year. You was raised there, you was born there. No, nigga, you wasn't. You was a visitor. And I'm gonna continue saying that. Your cousin and I was there, nigga. If you got cousin and that's from there. What we talking about? Now, hear what he's saying on Adam 22, man. On a little baby the other day. <laughs> on the story. Yeah, little baby in the trenches, man. Yeah, little I baby know. baby came to my hood, feel war. Shout out to little Jeremy Gas Gang. It was his video, shoot, shoot. Chances make champions. Yeah, we took little baby to the hood. He was in the middle of the trenches. Mm. And it was up, up. But little baby a good nigga. I fuck with him. What's your I fuck with him. What's your perspective on the hood at this point, though? Because you don't got to go there. But... Yeah. You got love for it, for it enough to the point where you still feel the need to stop by and everything? Man, man, yeah, without a doubt. You never can forget where you come from. And that's, and that's something that my old man instilled in me also. They never forget where you come from. Like every year for my birthday, I have a black party in Fifth Ward, in the middle of Fifth Ward. I don't know if you've seen the footage or not, but it be right. thousands of people in the middle of my hood. And Drake, them Ben Meek, them Ben Ross, them Ben Chris Brown, Tiger, like the name, Black Youngster, Moneybag, like the name, Lil' Kim, it go on and on. Right. Everybody come out every year. But I feel like it's important. 
is important for what? You was a visitor. That... Your father is from there, bro. Your father was on them blocks as a young age, probably getting there three, four in the morning, all that. I mean, the 80s, early 80s, before he started rapping a lot of records and all that. You ain't do that. By the time he had you, nigga, I was already in the mansion. What we talking about here, man? Why you keep saying you, oh, I never forget what I come from. You know, nigga, remember the mansion you came from, the, that, that neighborhood, the private school you came from, nigga? That's what you need to remember. You ain't come for fifth floor, man. Like I said, if you was down, like, listen, man, we all got them relatives that came to visit when they they come from the suburbs from whatever state they from or whatever other city they from, and it ain't really going on. They want to come to the arb hood. Oh, let me go. I want to go see cousin. What's the name? I want to go over there in the suburb. I, when the summertime comes, they come out here for a month or two. Am I lying? What are we talking about? They experienced the hood. You know, we accept them. That's her cousin. That's your brother. That's your sister. Whatever relative he is, he's, he's affiliated with you with. You walking him through the neighborhood and all that. What are we talking about? He was one of them. He was one of them. That's why I get mad when you sit here and act like this, bro. Rest in peace and take off because that's the reason why take off life got taken because you couldn't stop some little ass argument going against Quavo. But you supposed to be the man. You let that shit go. You let them niggas argue with Quavo, man. You wanted that to happen. You could have easily stopped that. If Mike Pritz couldn't stop that, why the hell you couldn't stop that? Obviously, you the you the honcho, right? You the honcho of my ties. So why you ain't stop them niggas arguing with Quavo before them shots rang down? What are we talking about here? You know why? Because you want to carry yourself like that because you never been that dude when you was young. You was a visitor. That part. You might got some cousins in your camp that's really from the hood, but you used to be the one that drive down there for an hour, nigga, 20 minutes going to go visit them niggas. Now, this is a time when he was beefing with Joe Buttons. Peep this out. And uh, say what you had to say about certain artists and shit like that. I think he's just a very honest person. <laughs> he's just a black he mad because Joe be speaking on, you know, Joe got his own podcast. That's number one. Number two, Joe's an OG in this game. Am I lying? What are we talking about here? Joe Button been in hip hop game for a long time before he retired. What are we talking about? Nigga, you was one of them niggas probably dancing to his dick to that pump it up. Pump, 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 pump it up. That song with Joe Button, whatever. I guarantee you was probably, and you dissing Mason Cam, nigga, you probably was dressing like Dipset. What are we talking about here? Because y'all not going to say act like Dipset and send no trend over here. Yeah, they said a trend, that fashion trend, the way people was dressing around that time. That shit was going from the East Coast, down South, all the way to the West Coast, to the Midwest. What are we talking about? And I guarantee you, there's some old ass photo on photos of Junior dressing like them on Dipset niggas back in the days, nigga. But you want to say, let's go back. Man, let's go back with this Joe Button situation, though. And, uh, Say what you had to say about certain artists and shit like that. I think he's just a very honest person. <laughs> he's just a blunt person. Nigga, this shit don't matter. We are blatant, blunt, and honest. That's what we are. That's what we stand on. We all that. Tell him to tell you that he don't think I'm that. We both that. It's the time and the place for everything. I never take my blatancy in my honesty, to try to uplift myself based upon another nigga's transgression. He capitalized on people bullshit. He'll say that he feel like this, this, and that about a nigga, but he ain't got to say that. He could have went, went and whispered in his young nigga ear because he an older nigga. You know what I'm saying? That has respect in the game. The same thing that he said well, nah, and nah, I ain't the same thing. He could have whispered something else. Let me tell you, son. Now, this is Joe Button. Now, him and Joe, they got they got on that club. This is a couple years back. Now, hear, hear what him and Joe had to say. I mean, because Joe joined them. Peep this out. Smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel. If you haven't hit that like, smash the like button. Share the video. Try to get that membership. Team Smoke, man. Yes. And you, guys you, are in the you let it be known experience. that you got situations with guys that ain't even know they had a situation with you, but you just stand on it.
Nah, I don't think that's like, my energy. I'm, you... I'm, te I'm telling you what's transpired. You might not think that's what you're displaying, but we tell you what you did display. Well, I wouldn't say it's displayed like that, but it's definitely like from this a cool. more it's like your, a your perspective. Let everybody else speak too, because there's a bunch of other people that can say some other shit. Hey, Junior, I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. He, 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 didn't be, he ain't did nothing. Like on his podcast, I listened to him. He ain't did nothing but show show respect to, to, to all the vibes. So I don't know. I, I understand your perspective. I've been told you to exit the building. Damn. That is my perspective, too, though. And I think if we speak to Lil Yachty or any of the people that. Exactly. You see how somebody just shut on Junior up? See, Junior always want to jump in situations and try to test certain people out. That's my problem. Who is you to be doing that? Who are you intimidating? Like I said, you was a visitor in Fifth Ward, boy. You had cousins that, that grew up with, they had to flick the light, roaches scatter all over the place, ice is probably all over. Yeah, that, that type of environment. Waking up in the morning, got to go to the store to get the food stamps and all that. Yeah, that type of environment. Crackheads on corn and all that. You know, you 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 know that the environment that you come you come and visit when you was a kid and come and used to come by and see a little bit, but then you had to go back, you went back home to the nice house, big mansion. Yeah, that that yeah, that probably bumped two or three of your cousins with you from the hood. You was a visitor. See, people that's from that environment, we call y'all visitors. Y'all are cousins that live in other that live in a nice ass neighborhood. So when y'all come to our neighborhood, our hood that we from, we embrace you because you family. But see, you took that embrace way to a whole nother level the way you carry yourself now as a grown ass man. There's no reason for you to walk around the way you walk around trying to intimidate other people. Allegedly, everything I speak on is alleged over here. There's no reason for you to be, be little and trying to talk to people because you went to a private school and you think a dude from the street is weak. Because you said that on... What are we talking about? Let's go back to that subliminal message you allegedly you supposed to have sent to Cam and Mace. You need to be fucking me up, right? Because niggas try to glorify bullshit. Like you, niggas try to glorify soft shit. Niggas try to glorify niggas that ain't that niggas that's flaw. Nigga, we know when niggas flow when we deal with them in the streets. We know when the nigga flow. Like, we understand that they flow. We don't capitalize off they flowness, though, because we'll capitalize off real shit. We ain't gonna capitalize off no nigga being flow weak as hell. Nigga, we understand when a nigga weak as hell, then he a street, call himself a street nigga. He could be a street nigga, but he's still weak as hell. We don't capitalize and try to glorify this shit now. We gonna sit in here have conversations about niggas as strong as us. We gonna have conversations about niggas as weak as hell. You a hypocrite. The reason why I say that, because you carry yourself like you a street nigga. You carry yourself like you come from the hood. You carry, you put this image like you come, you're like you lived in the hood 365 days out of years. You, you carry yourself like you come from that environment. You want me to continue? Cause, but it's a lot of weak niggas in that environment also, in the hood. And it's a lot of strong-minded niggas also that you probably think that's weak-minded because you went to private school. So when you talk to a hood nigga, you already think that what he's saying don't make no sense because you went to a private school. And I'm lying? You look like one of them type of dudes. I know for a fact, I put, I put, man, listen, I put, I put money on it for the next two times when he go home, he tell his wife, like, man, this boy think he know everything. Finesse, if you watch it, you know, goddamn well, you know that, that that's the truth. Because you come from that environment. You come from the hood. You come from the gutter from Memphis and all that. What are we talking about? So when he talked to you, you probably think, man, this nigga be talking to me like I don't know nothing. But you just got to play dumb because who he is and who his father is. The name. Not the, not the, not, not, not the work he put in it. In the, in the, in the, I mean, in the history and in the streets and all that. In the early 2000s and all that, whatever. Like some of these people do, actually. Like the 50 cents and all that. Yeah, that part. 
50 in Houston. Why you don't push up on fifth? <laughs> yeah, because fifth money long too. Pause. Let's get to that part. Oh, y'all forgot fifth had fifth just got keyed. Well, then he get on um, the, the, the 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 then Houston the city gave him the key to the city. Who was this? Go oh, Google that. Y'all think I'm lying? Google that. Y'all gonna see fifth standing up there with the with this with the key in the city of Houston. Who we talking about here? Why you ain't pushing up on fifth? Fifth getting a lot of money down there. From Houston all the way down to Louisiana, where he got what he setting up shop at for this arm, for this arm, for this arm. What's the name? For this arm, for this arm, on movie long thing. His movie lab. Pardon me. That's how mad I am right now because I'm over here stuttering everything because this dude just be carrying this. He carries stuff like he come from that environment. You was a visitor. Like I said, when you got your license, you was one of them that came drove down there for an hour, twenty minutes, thirty minutes. Depends how far you live from the hood. But you had to drive on a highway to come to the hood to visit your cousins. Stop it, bro. Stop it, man. Like, for real. Because not for nothing, man, if you carry yourself in a better way, you will have more people down with mild ties to entertain or whatever the label. But you don't. People come to Houston, they don't even make it back home. You got caught up in two situations in one year, take off and Duke situation, and you was in both spots. What are we talking about here? Duke first, then take off a month and a half later. And got the nerve, you said you don't know this guy. Smooth went on a million dollars worth of games. Shout out to Gilling Wallow. Smooth, smooth went on there and talked. Smooth drives. And, oh, yeah, you know, I met the dude at the pool and this and that and the third. Nigga, you, nigga, you was just, nigga, you just dropped a whole, a whole, a whole more statement. You just dropped a whole statement. Where you met him at? How you know him? Who, who you met him with? This standard third ain't that a statement? Ain't that somebody in the room that's getting integrated with everybody by the police? And he tell him, yeah, yo, I met him over here. He was with this person. This was nigga. That's exactly what you said. You met him at Boosie pool party. I, 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 I. Go see my video. You dry sense. and everything I speak on is a legend over here. But boy, you don't come from that environment, though, man. That's my thing. Like, stop it, Junior. This is me talking to you. Stop it. We all got cousins that came to visit. We braced them. Just like your cousins braced you in Fifth War. Your, your brother Jazz don't act like that, so why you act like that? That'll tell y'all right there. That'll tell y'all right there. Why Jazz don't walk around with his chest out 6'11", 200-something pounds like he, like he chilled night too? Why he don't act like that? He don't act like that. And I'm pretty much sure Jazz was a visitor too and all that, but he don't brace that. He don't be talking like, yo, hood and this and that and yeah, you got to check in. Like, man, what? I got to throw parties over here. That's why Adam 22 said, yo, why are you talking about the hood? You don't never got to visit it. Adam wanted to tell you, like, nigga, you wasn't even raised in the hood. That's what Adam 22 wanted to tell you. He just had to play a little, you know what I mean? A little, uh, you know what I mean? Look, he ain't want to go too far with it. But yeah, yeah you know, I got to throw a party there. My father always taught me, you know what I mean? You got to never forget where you come from. Nigga, you come from the suburbs, nigga. Throw a party up there. What we talking about here? That's why Adam looked at you like, like you was crazy. We understand you do a little block party here and there and all that, but my nigga, you, you brace it to a point that you, you was at two situations where two people got their life took it, and you was at both spots. Then you walk around here with no type of sympathy, no type of nothing, no, no, like you, like you don't even regret it, especially with the takeoff situation, no type of nothing. You just, you just talking there like you, like you were really like a mob or something. That's why Offset went off and said what he said. With the clip I played with y'all with Offset, like, come on, bro, like, yo, like. Just because Quavo scared of you, nigga, that's so man. It's only but one of few niggas that's gonna be afraid of you. It's not too many niggas afraid of you, boy. You gotta understand that. And niggas get touched every day, son. That's another thing. But your security is top notch. Believe that. You got your main security, main ones. Remind y'all, paid ones, ones that's ready to shoot. Boom, they ready to take something off. Big niggas, everything. Then you got the fifth war security. So you got multiple. You got security on top of security, and that's smart. I give you that. But boy, the way you carry yourself, man, anybody could get touched though. Don't get it twisted because you're gonna a legend, and everything I speak on is a legend over here. You're gonna mess with somebody that has money, the money the same way your money is. And they're gonna get tired of you the way you talk. Because, like I said, you walk around here and talk like you be little niggas from the hood, 
and like you smarter than niggas. You're not even a rapper. That's the crazy part. Your artist finesse two times on the talk like this, nigga. I had to do a quick video on this because Junior out of control, man. I'm tired of this dude for real, man. Do me a favor, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, make sure you share this video. Does anybody need to see this video with this private school kid? This kid is out of control for real. Never seen a private school kid that wouldn't be so gangster. Never in my life. Supposed to be the other way around. Supposed to get out the hood, don't want to be gangster beat. Not me, stay in the cup, stay low key, get money, sign artists. Show your face once in a while, pop out once in a while. That part, what are we talking about here? But no, you want to be Suge Knight of, of death row and all this. You want to walk with Suge was playing hands and feet on niggas. That's the difference. That's the difference. You want to jump on live and talk, talk crazy to niggas and have niggas come to your city with fake protection and niggas don't make it home? Come on, bro. Let's cut the, let's cut the shenanigans out, man. Because enough is enough. Somebody got to let you know. Your father need to sit you down and tell you, boy, you need to sit down. We already got heat. Go. We already got this heat on us already, man. And I ain't never had this heat on me like this in Pikes since back in the days. I know he, come on. Pop's getting old. The old man getting old. He ain't getting younger. And the way you going, it's like you're going to crumble this whole goddamn empire when Pop's, up and when Pop's ain't here no more. Allegedly. Come on, man, because everybody got an expiring date. And the way you looking like you gonna just, man, listen, if it ain't jazz, that's why jazz is smart. That's why this that empire always gonna continue because of jazz. If they leave it up to you, boy, man, that junk, man, listen, man. Man, that whole rap a lot, man, mom ties, man, that junk will crumble. If you leave it up to Junior. It's because the way you carry yourself. You don't you don't you don't you don't do business the way you don't do business like that, trying to intimidate people. And that's the way you yeah, that's the way you project yourself. That's the way you come in the build, that's the way you do all that. Try to intimidate people. That's crazy. I'm up out of here, man. Make sure y'all comment below and tell me what's going on with y'all boy. H-Town, tap in, man. Did y'all boy go to public school? Because I know a goddamn well he didn't. Private school. Let's get to that part. You was a visitor. I'm going to continue saying that. You don't know how I feel to live in that hood 365 days out of the all 18 years of your life. Or 20-something years, 30-something years. You got people still living in that condition. Just living better than they was when they was a child. Let's get to that part. Man, tap in, Houston. Make sure y'all comment, man. I'm up out of here, man. Make sure y'all hit that like button, subscribe to this channel. Try to get that badge. Join it. Join it. Get y'all membership. Get that badge. Join Team Smoke, man. Share this video. It's your boy Smoke News TV. If they know, they know. Salute, gang. I'm up out of here. Mm -mm -mm.